Chapter 1. The success of children at school is not limited to what they learn in the classrooms alone. Most of the mind tools students are taught in school include a variety of strategies, tricks, and habits that they can use to keep their minds on track. They learn to use private speech, talking to themselves as they do a difficult task because it helps them remember what step comes next. Scientists have explored that schools of all kinds now operate on a faulty theory of intelligence, and they have come up with a new strategy on how children think and how they can learn fast. Intelligence can only be measured in schools through GPA or college graduation rate. They believe their cognitive skills drive them and also allow them to deal with certain issues and other unpredictable situations. Measurable intelligence in children can be seen in the ability to recognize words and letters, IQ, skills to calculate, identify patterns and colors. Early detection of these skills helps a parent to know what interests the child in question. Chapter 2. You cannot provide solutions to problems being faced in a school without putting into consideration the happenings in the community itself. A community contributes either positively or negatively to a child's development, especially a poor environment. Poverty has a great effect on children. It results in consistently low test scores, poor attendance, chronic discipline problems, and a high dropout rate. Some principles of good parenting have been analyzed into two different neurological systems that develop during childhood and early adulthood. These principles have a great effect on the lives of adolescents. In early childhood, brains and bodies are more sensitive to the effect of stress and trauma as a result of poverty. In the adolescent stage, the damages being inflicted can lead to a long-lasting and serious problem. The first system is called incentive processing system, and this makes a child more sensitive, attention-seeking, and emotionally reactive, etc. The second system is known to be the cognitive control system, the cognitive control system allows a child to regulate all the urges present in the incentive processing system. The incentive processing system reaches the extreme in early adolescence, while the cognitive control system manifests fully in the early 20s of the child. Chapter 3. Children who are far behind on letters and numbers are those whose emotions are like time bombs. They cannot control the impulses that make up the most part of their classes. Children who were raised in a stressful environment are those who generally find it harder to concentrate in class, sit still for long, recover from disappointments, and unfavorable situations, and it also becomes very hard for them to follow directions. Character can be built through learned optimism, strengths, motivation, and self-control, which is a necessary tool for success. This also tends to have a serious direct effect on their overall performance in school. As a matter of fact, when preschool teachers are surveyed, most importantly about their students, they say that the biggest problems they face are not the children who do not know their numbers and letters, but the children who do not really know how to manage their tempers or calm themselves down after a provocation. Chapter 4. Students who excel in school are the ones who possess certain psychological skills like optimism, social agility, resilience, and self-control. They are not necessarily the ones who excelled academically. Children need to learn to be optimistic instead of wallowing in their setback, which they might not be prepared for emotionally or psychologically. Pessimism leads to depression because people tend to react to negative events by seeing it as permanent and personal. Children should learn to pick themselves up after an unfavorable event and push further. Your characters, which constitute some set of attributes that defines you, are sometimes changeable. Psychological control is a skill you can learn, practice, and even teach as long as you are committed to it. Learning is a character that is perceived as hard by students, but in the real sense, learning is actually fun. Students should imbibe the characteristics of learning. Motivation works when a child knows what he or she wants, and that is the only factor such a child needs to get going and achieve what he or she wants. Did you know, talent can be built right from scratch to a high point through determination. The most talented people in various fields are a product of consistent hard work and dedication. Chapter 5. As parents, the best way to help build the character of your child is allowing them to attempt something where there is a possibility of them failing. Motivate children to pick themselves up and achieve real success. The process is actually not academic, but therapeutic in nature. Learned optimism allows you to imagine a good future and envision all the good things that will go with it. By doing so, you have trained your cognitive mind to learn to achieve success even when faced with troubles. Character can never be defined merely by success, but by how you handle failure and the pressure to succeed. 
Children who are able to recognize failure and try again have higher chances of college graduation and good GPAs, regardless of other limiting factors like IQ or economic background. Character is one of those words that complicate any conversation, mostly because it can mean different things to different people. It is often used to represent adherence to a particular set of values, which means that its definition will necessarily change over time. Optimism favors indulging, which means imagining the future you will like to achieve, especially for a middle school student. This might mean getting an A in math next year and vividly envisioning all the good grades that will go along with it. The praise, the self-satisfaction, and also the future success. Chapter 6. Learn to think outside the box and negotiate unfamiliar situations by seeking alternative solutions to problems. You should help your children develop their cognitive flexibility because it will expose them to critical thinking and sharpen their ability to bring solutions to problems. Games like chess can be used to stimulate the brain. It makes children become serious, helps them believe in their ability, and it also gives them room for continuous improvement. When a person's mind or body is stretched to its limit in a voluntary manner, they tend to achieve more difficult tasks. Critical thinking tends to boost IQ in a very significant manner, making it very difficult to lose. When you finally lose, you go over the mistakes you made or the mistakes you keep making, and you try to get to the bottom of why you made them. Like the best therapists, you will have to make them take responsibility for their mistakes and learn from them without obsessing over them or beating themselves up for too much. Very rarely do kids have experience in the life of losing when it was entirely in their control. But when they lose a chess game, they know that they have no one to blame but themselves. They had everything they needed to win, and they lost. With that in mind, they will make adjustments and pay more attention to detail. However, when children reach adolescence, they will have a need to feel they are being taken seriously. That means taking on challenges, learning discipline, and understanding that failure is not something to be feared, but rather an opportunity to do more and also to improve. Cognitive behavioral therapy is just one example of what psychologists call metacognition, a term that means broad thinking. To develop qualities like perseverance and focus, infants need a high level of warmth and nurturance from their caregivers or parents. When it comes to ambition, it is crucial to be able to distinguish between wanting something and choosing it. You must be able to decide whether you want to become a world champion or whether you choose to become a world champion. The fact that you want something doesn't mean you will become that thing. You must make moves and choose to become that thing if you truly want it. Chapter 7. Completing a task is essential in the development of the cognitive system among college students. Most high schools now train their students to develop their brain for the workplace where their skill is needed for both critical thinking and problem solving so that they won't have problems in making radical decisions. Non-cognitive skills like grit, resilience, and resourcefulness reinforce growth and change the mindset of children to get smarter and do better. The non-cognitive skill will also help students to achieve a speedy transformation and also compensate them for an inequality they might have faced in the education system. When a student has good grades through high school, it reveals so much about the student, the motivation quality, as well as perseverance, good study management, and excellent time management skill. This shows that the student will compete well in a college program without any hindrance at all. Did you know? Research showed that in 1961, an average college student spends about 24 hours every week studying outside the classroom. This became 20 hours every week in the year 1981, and then 14 hours per week in 2003. Chapter 8. The prefrontal cortex of the child is very flexible, and it quickly responds to intervention through the adolescent stage and even up to early adulthood. Teaching that targets this part of the brain can be effective throughout elementary to secondary education. But if you enter today's middle schools without solid letters and numbers knowledge, all the children will have in mind will not be effective enough for cognitive learning. Psychologists have long suspected that a person needs more than intelligence to achieve chess mastery. But for over a century, researchers have been struggling to figure out just which skills are the important ones. In the game of chess, the skillful player analyzes their positions more accurately compared to the novices. What was surprising was actually how they were so much better than their counterparts. The chess master was more pessimistic, more hopeful, and more confident than the novices. When the novices find a nice move that they like, they tend to fall prey to confirmation bias, to see only the ways that it could lead to success, ignoring possible pitfalls. 
Chess is inherently painful, and no matter how good you get, you never stop making stupid mistakes that will get you frustrated to a breaking point. This is why one of the most important parts of getting good at chess is feeling confident that you have within yourself the power to win. Chapter 9. Students can find a better path to increase the possibility of achieving a better future for themselves when they explore alternatives. Sometimes you have to quit doing what others think is best for you when you know you want something else. You might be interested in following a particular dream that doesn't sit well with people, but unless you try, you can't fail. Most people believe that education is the solution to poverty because it is an achievement that tends to bridge the gap between the elite and the poor. This idea became a belief that when a poor child's education is highly improved, it could help them escape poverty, since it's been shown that children who do great in school will actually do more in life. Also, study has shown that poor children are mostly depressed or abused since they are either raised by poorly educated parents, single moms and dads, or unemployed parents. They can hardly perform in school or any other task because they lack the motivation to do so. There are some children who work extremely hard but never have to make a difficult decision or confront a real challenge, and so they enter the adult world competent but lost off real-life experiences. When children experience major trauma or consistent lower-level trauma as infants and toddlers, their prefrontal cortexes are adversely affected, leaving them neurologically predisposed to poor concentration, determination, and behavioral skills, and thus academically, they are predisposed to poor grades. This is regardless of their economic background. Children who grow up in a more stressful environment generally find it hard and difficult to concentrate, sit still, rebound from disappointments, and hard to follow directions. These problems definitely have direct effects on their performance in school. When children in high school or college are working diligently and building relationships with professors and studying or utilizing all of the skills that they have been trained to use, they can close the gap between knowing and being ignorant. It has been seen most times that, all of a sudden, students who might have been three or four grade levels behind in high school will catch up in a really significant way to their peers by the beginning of the sophomore year. This is because they have developed their reading skills by employing cognitive success tactics. No matter how overwhelming it tends to be, or how exhausting it is, parents need to teach their children never to give up. It is a great achievement, which shows that the students are finding a better path for success in the future. I think the best thing we can do for our children is to allow them to do things for themselves. Allow them to be strong. Allow them to experience life on their own terms. Allow them to take the subway. Let them be better people. Let them believe more in themselves. See Joy Bell C. Conclusion Parents and high school teachers should make sure that they focus on the cognitive skills of children to ensure they succeed in life and learn how to handle various issues. As a parent, you are in a good position to help your children develop these skills more than anyone else effectively. Parents impact their children by being attentive to them, and this will affect the child's future behavior and his or her way of thinking. Some of the skills that truly matter for academic success are conscientiousness, diligence, grit, or non-cognitive skills. Society as a whole can do something different that will influence the development of children in a positive way. If children can use all of the characteristics they have, they will succeed more in life and also in their education. Self-control is a major part of a child's development. It is important because, without control, the child can get out of hand, become hard to handle, and can also become rebellious, and this will lead to the child failing. Children who can stand in line and wait their turn in a board game or wait until Christmas to unwrap a gift are typical examples of children who possess self-control. Self-control also helps them to contribute more to their academic success. Research has proven that children who have the patience to wait for 15 minutes for their treats score higher points on SAT than those who are impatient. Try this. Learn to apply your cognitive skills every day by pulling yourself up through trial and error mechanisms. Teach your children that wanting something is not the same as choosing something. A child who wants something might continue to want it. And a child who chooses to be that thing will find a way to become that thing.